In this edition of the BCA Club School of the Month, we visit the Blenheim Ground in St. Michael to speak with officials of the Barbados Cricket League. There's so much to learn. We are excited. This is we. It's always an honor to be in the presence of Richard Straker here at the Blenheim Ground in Barbados. How are you doing, Richard? I'm good, Stephen. You? I'm very well. The Barbados Cricket League, an organization and an entity that has produced wonderful cricketers for this country. Richard, you were part of many strong sides that played during the 1970s and beyond. Could you give us an insight in the Barbados Cricket League and your experience as a player over the years? Well, Stephen, um, when I, I think was seven years old, there's a guy called Manny Martindale. He had a, a clinic in Christchurch and he saw me, smart me, and he told me he's going to speak to the BCL and <laughs> invite me, not even the trials, to come and play. <laughs> Wonderful. Right, so I came and I played, you know, when I was about 18, I was invited to be set trials, but even playing a trial game because he saw the talent in me. I then came to the BCL in 1969. I played the, the season went over in 1970, and I remember playing against William Bourne <laughs> at Harrison College. That was my first game at the BCL without even practicing with BCL or anything like that. But then in the 1970, Charlie took over, right? And um, we had guys in our team like Desmond Hill, Desmond played with us, um, Newton, Sandy Ford, um, Trotman, um, I call him Richard Mears, Ricky Skeet, Albert Padmore, Nigel Johnson, I think it's all Emerson Trotman. And I can say to you that we, we created a, such a, a feeling team that Shorty was on one side and on the other side. I didn't have to go over the cover to cover because <laughs> we, we were so good. Yes. I remember a match um, against police. We gave police 40 to win. He won for 39. Wow. Here at the same blending. Nobody can believe that. But prior to that, we took from 1970 to 1973. We were more than that, and we won the three cups in, that, in, in 1973. And I think no, nobody in Barbers have, have done that before. I don't know if he's done it all I know, but I know for sure that there's no team in Barbers have done that uh, before. Okay, so I think that, you know, and, and playing with the B-Cell, you know, I, I found that, to me, I play for Barbers and I can as well, right? But I found that the B-Cell team was the best team I've played in all my life, honestly, because we had camaraderie, you know, the fellas came from the same background like, as well, and we were friends, we used to operate the young like, as well. We live like a family, one happy family, right? So I think that um, playing for the B-Cell, you know, I thought it, it, it done a lot for us. And you know, the B-Cell produced so many cricketers. Oh, yes. You know, that, that, um, even now at this stage, I'm so disappointed that it's no longer the BCL. <laughs> but, but I'm going to ask you, on an annual basis, there was a very important game where the BCL came up against the Barbados Cricket League. Could you tell me how that experience was for someone like you that participated in, in, <laughs> in, in those games? Well, Stephen, let me say to you, I, I will always remember this game because um, in that annual game, we, we played the BCL, trust in BCL, played against the BCL team. And the BCL team, man, like, Simon Nurse and Vampa Holden and now Mosley and Nurse and Tony King and all that. So I remember Van Hall was bowling to <laughs> Van Mohol was well bowling to Albert Padmore. He struck him in his chest, right? <laughs> and then he got him with the next ball. I walk at 70 years old, you know. Wow. And the first ball I faced from Van Mohol, he bumped at me and I hook it down mid wicket for four, right? I hear Nurse and Tony King. Who's he ball? We come from? A little bony boy hit me, you know. <laughs> I remember I made 45 not in that game, and then it was selected for the BC trials, BC trials, sorry, that particular year. So it, it was an annual game, I think that, I, I believe, I don't know, can't be now, but I always felt that that game should continue, because there were fellas that who they've never seen before, heard before, and they make, they make trials and that kind of from that same particular game. I, I was very disappointed that I actually stopped altogether, but it done a lot for us, and, and that was a game that I really enjoyed, and, you know, we, let's see, Charlie and Johnson, all these fellas went down to play for Barbados, Newton as well from that same, same game. But it's interesting you spoke about the camaraderie in the Barbados Cricket League team. How were the supporters in that day? Was it a situation where you played in front, large crowds and persons actually look forward to you guys showing your, your cricketing skills on the field of play? Yeah, well, mainly at Empire and Spartan. We always had big crowds and here at Blenheim, even when we were practicing. Wow. Um, we used to have crowds here, like, like watching. I remember evening, I remember evening. Um, we were first faced, you know, Robin Gale? Yes. Very fast at, at my MPC. And I must say, 
that's why me as a coach, I always already Charlie. You say we're playing Gail on Saturday, he gave the fast bowlers four new balls each. And he told the first three back to the father, Newton, Sandy Ford, Johnson and myself. So Charlie was bowling at me, bowling bounce at me, right? And I hook him over the pavilion. I hope you do have a gear started too. <laughs> you know what I mean? And the preparation was so good that we made 300 runs in the game. So even when we come up against Spartan, like spin. Remember one hand one? Yes. He would come on bowl off breaks and leg breaks in the same race spell. He would say, I'm Holford today and I'm Howard. Right? So that when we come up against Howard or Holford, we would know how to handle him, right? Also, when we won the Knuckle Cup, we would practice one day a week for Knuckle Cricket. Yes. Where you have the field setting and you know, you give you a, a, an example where how many runs I get and put that over something like that. So we used to practice knuckle cricket. That's why we were so good at it. Right? So there's something that I find that is, is missing now in our preparation. Even at our youth level. I find that we, we seem to not, you know, they say we can't play spinner as well. Right? But obviously you gotta practice it. And I believe that we need to do some something about that. Even in our cricket now, can't find to play slow bowling. Let me spin slow bowling. <laughs> Interesting to about spin and slow bowling. After your playing days, you became and still remain one of the most respected coaches in Barbados. I want to know how your contribution as coach, not just to the wider Barbados, but to the BCL, how was that experience? Well, um, I remember, <laughs> this is even a few minutes ahead now, right? I remember um, I was at Maple and they called the BCL, the um, Common School Central. That hurt me to the bone. And I came, uh, I think it was in St. Hill there. He was the president at the time. I told him, I want to work with the BCL because I, I felt hurt to think that where I came from and done so well and they, they, they criticized the BCL as well. I came here and I remember I, I wasn't even playing. We were short and I had to, to I had to play in that, that particular match. I said, I slept, you know what I was saying? I'm getting older now. And I, I took a catch. You first can't believe that. Sure, I got you know, 40 or anything, being able to catch a ball like that. And um, we made the finals. You know, and I don't think the BCL have done anything, anything for quite a few years. And I, I done, I worked with them for two, two, two seasons. Um, and we made the finals in one of the years. So I thought it was good. Well, Richard Straker, has indeed been a pleasure speaking to you today, talking about your playing days and then your coaching days at the Barbados Cricket League. And I want to wish you all the very best in the future. Thanks, Stephen. Thank you. It's indeed a pleasure, Mr. Aswick. You would have spent many decades with the Barbados Cricket League. And this afternoon, I just want to find out from you when that organization, institution, Barbados Cricket League produced so many outstanding cricketers from Barbados. It was like a nursery. And I want to know how joyful it would have been to be part of that journey and some of those players who actually came through the Barbados Cricket League to play for their country. Well, speaking of the league, the league as a cricket club in the membership with the Barbados Cricket Association started in 1969 and it should have started in 1968 but unfortunately the late great J.M. Hewitt he passed away and did not live long enough to, to see the fruits of his labour which had started, like he said, in the decades of the 30s and come to fruition. So I am, um, because I was associated with, with Mr. Hewitt from the days of the press club, which, you know, Mr. Hewitt was a, an editor at The Advocate. And when we first started, we started in a, a room next to the um, public buildings and uh, Mr. Hewitt then decided that we would have to look for premises to give the BCL um, the opportunity to spread its wings. I think um, when Mr. Hewitt left we had about close to 100 clubs scattered throughout the 12 divisions in the league and uh, Mr. Hewitt, I don't think he had a driver's license but if there be somebody would pick him up and take him to the cricket grounds in the league. I've never sat on this 
this bench that on which we are sitting. Yes. Because they never had the privilege of doing an interview on this side of the effects. Yes. And um, over at Blending House, of course, um, there was much controversy over there, and I left at the end of um, the decade of the 70s, I think it was, to retire from BCL Cricket Administration, but not from cricket. Yes. And looking across here uh, is great nostalgic stuff because when, if I turn around, I'd be looking at a place where um, the amount of time I spent over there was enough to make a loving wife that um, divorce you. <laughs> but but um, I, I didn't quite um, anger to the part where, where she executed, <laughs> <laughs> executed that urge. I consider it honor to be in the presence of Mr. Glenn Singh Hill, who has served in many capacities here at the Barbados Cricket League. How are you doing, Mr. Singh Hill? Uh, the present moment, I'm doing fine. Enjoying my retirement from my job, which I've held for over 40 years, and really enjoying life to the max. Well, Mr. Singh Hill, you talk about 40 years having worked. I believe that it was back in 1978 that you came on to the administration of this wonderful organization, the Barbados Cricket League. Tell me a little bit about that beginning and the journey that you've experienced here at the Barbados Cricket League. Yeah, um, in that year, uh, I came to the annual general meeting and it was mainly because Spring Free Cricket Club, which I had represented, had won the cup. And we were told that there was a lack of funds and there was no cup or presentation for the, for the organization. So I was a little bit upset as a youngster. And I said, this isn't good enough. We need to do something about it. So I got up and spoke at AGM. And you know, when you speak loudly at AGM, you always get nominated for some position. <laughs> so I was nominated as an assistant zone secretary for the North. Uh, I think the division actually, I think it was the Congregant division. And from there, I remained on the board until this day. Um, I went from assistant zone secretary to zone secretary. Then I served as secretary under Mr. Essex and also moved from there to president after Mr. Sowers had left and remained there. The league has been through a number of challenges and I know that the one of the major problems was lack of funding. Any organization that is going to survive must have funding and the funds were not really forthcoming. We would have had uh, Sponsorship, yes, from Banks Breweries back then. They were a major sponsor. And I was able then to get the RC to come on board and sponsor the player of the day. We also were able to get some at laundry as well to give us a sponsor. So I think it was maybe two years or so. And we also had previous to my being there, CO Williams Construction. They used to sponsor the Champion of Champions competition on a yearly basis. Uh, I must say though, before I conclude, that the, peace, the government to the Sports Council has given us uh, an increase in subvention last year. And we were very happy because we were able then to pay the umpires coming towards the end of the season. And we were also able to give free balls to the clubs. And I don't know if that is going to keep them for this year, but um, if the government continues its subvention at that, at that amount, we'd be really happy. And I must say thanks to the Minister and Neil from the Sports Council for having, you know, done so good to give us some money. Well, Mr. Lansing Hill, mm -hmm. it's indeed been a pleasure listening to you with the passion and the energy that you still have for the Barbados Cricket League. And I want to wish you Mr. Christopher McCalling and many others 
who continue to do their absolute best for the Barbados Cricket League. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Good.